If you're new to the channel, this is the YouTube yacht. It's a boat themed, boat shaped rental cabin we're building down here in Indiana. And you can tell we're in the process of getting things sheeted and framed up. And we're waiting on a lift to come in that we're renting to sheet the walls and the roof so that we can get that finished up. But while we're waiting on that, we're still trying to get some other stuff done. On the previous couple videos, we came down here and started kind of getting the rough grade established and some big old stumps removed just so we can get some progress made while we're waiting on the rest of the tools and equipment we need for the actual structure itself. Well, today we're continuing that process. We're going to take our 755 John Deere compact utility garden tractor, work on getting this polished up, our Ford 555 backhoe, get the rest of these stumps and this big old mess behind us cleaned up and try to get this stuff burning. Yeah, it's a mess down here and we definitely got our work cut out for us, but hopefully by the end of the video, we can check the rough grade off the list of things that need to be done for this project. Step one is going to see if we can get this pile started and then we're going to try to get everything thrown on top with the backhoe. Luckily I arranged this in a very safe manner. Let's see what we got in here. Just a TP of death going on up there. That was, that was good planning. We may try to address that today too. There are a ton of ways to get burn piles going. If I'm being paid, back when I did excavation, we wanted to get it up going hot and going fast so we could get work done because production mattered. So I'd buy diesel fuel, I'd buy straw bales, I'd throw it all in there. We're gonna get the thing going as quick as possible. But when I'm just burning stuff on the homestead, I don't really feel like wasting the money on the diesel fuel. To do that, I just use firewood. We'll get it going from there, get it ramped up with a leaf blower, and we might go get a squirrel cage fan later and really get this thing going. We'll just cornhole this stuff back where I want it and then I can get it arranged. All right, you guys gotta come with me. I'm gonna go right down in this hole here. Try to get it cooking there. We normally have these little wax fire starters we make. I realized today we're out of them, so I'll have to cook up a batch of those soon. I'm gonna take the saw and cut some of this stuff into some smaller pieces we can chunk onto there. And I think it's gonna be time to get the backhoe down here. Took like 15 minutes, by the way. Beat spending $50 on diesel fuel. I think we've got the heat established. Let's try to get the backhoe work down here. The catch is it's kind of steep, which is awkward for a backhoe, especially that two-wheel drive rig. But we're gonna really try not to get stuck in the fire. That's big on the list today. Top five, probably.
that's pretty much my biggest fear today, getting stuck while we're pushing something in and not being able to get out. We're gonna swing around, nose uphill, try to get in a position where we can take the boom and start working this stuff this way, swinging. Operating on a hill with this machine, it's just, it's sketchy. It doesn't take much. I just go real slow with it. We're already leaning, but if I'm not paying attention or I'm just whipping through here all quick like, popping up on a little stump like that, even though it doesn't look like much, and wouldn't be much on flat ground, that'd be enough to kick me over for sure. We're finding a soft spot on the downhill side. We just gotta go nice and slow with it. I think I'm gonna try to get right back in here. I think that's my plan. Oh, bud. That about reached out and grabbed me, didn't it? Pop that little stump real quick so we're not fighting it. floppy but it gets the job done I need to put a pin in that I'm just breaking pins left and right let's go see what's happening on the other side of this oh yeah that big stump is just look at her cooking that's great and there's some smoke working its way up through there which means there should be some heat coming up through there so hopefully hopefully it can kind of work its way that way in an effort to not move that down here anymore than I need to Let's fire up the 755 and try to get the rest of this smaller stuff pushed down to where I can grab it. We'll get it up on top. And if I'm feeling sprightly, we may give her the old spin around and give one good hard push into that. not too bad of a looking pile. Let's see if we can get this thing up out of the danger zone. I, I, let's, let's give her one push.
pretty sketchy. And I don't think we're gonna accomplish much. We'll give her one more, but I think we'll just have to move the fire with the fan like we talked about. Yep, yep, yep. So I've got this sacrificial PVC pipe. Comes in real handy. Metal pipe works better if you get one. If you don't, well, here we are. I cannot believe that pipe melted like that. You know, I'm as surprised as you are. Yep. Let's go track down a squirrel cage fan and, and we'll bring the generator down. We'll just, we'll make a whole thing out of it. I don't know if this thing works. I don't even remember where I got it. Get low. Oh gosh, get low. Okay. I don't know if you can see in there, but we're working that way through the pile. That's great. This would just burn. We could walk away from this, let it, and it'll smolder down. But I want it to be way down by the time we call the day today. Now we're just kind of having fun at this point. This presents a problem. Like I was saying, I just don't want to spend a bunch of money on diesel fuel to get the fire started. Plus, we're not really getting the fire started anymore. You know, now we're just ramping it up for some good times. Anyway, let's start up this gas power generator to run this fan. Honestly, it's just an experiment. People keep suggesting for me to do this when I burn. Let's try it. I feel like it's doing something. We'll move this stuff out of the way and we'll reposition it over here a little bit. Maybe a piece of duct work aimed in there, I'll do a better job. I say we let her run and just see what happens. You do have to listen to the generator now, so I apologize, but it's the cost of science. Next really fun thing we gotta do, that little hackberry is broken off, needs to come down. That maple needs to come down. Let's get you up close. Here's what we got going on with this maple. Nothing good. Dead ash tied into it as well, all propped up on the topless, topless ash tree there. I think my best bet's gonna be some kind of sketchy cut down here and then a chain to pull it out and hopefully pull the top right down on top of the fire. I think we gotta cut that little hackberry off first though. Look at the inside of that log burning. Good enough. I'm just gonna cut that up into pieces that I can throw it in there. Then we're gonna try to cut that one. No, 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 no. Not a waste of firewood. It's just, I've got a really nice outdoor fireplace. Either the butt will just drop and we can pull it up or the butt drops and it's enough shock that it drops the whole top. Either way, I need to have her head on a swivel and make sure I got a clear path if I need to take off somewhere, you know? Still 
one just a little bit. Beautiful. Looks like the fire's made itself across. That's good. I really hope when we pull this, it takes that ash tree with it. I'd love to get both those at least down. Not have to worry about it. I hope that just right on top of it, you know? It is so close. I just got to reset one more time. I should have it. While that's cooking, let's go ahead and finish getting all this cleaned up. The small stuff, we'll just use the 755. We got some decent rocks to get out of it, a whole lot of little rocks to get out of it. We're just gonna kind of start making passes down, smoothing it out. Remember this isn't finished grade, it's just rough grade. Eventually we'll bring us, uh, remember this isn't finished grade, it's just rough grade. I'll bring my pulverizer out here one day and run over it whenever we get some topsoil. I'm just kind of trying to get everything closed up so there's nothing to hold water. We are getting close. 
real close. I'm gonna take the saw and we're gonna go around this backside. And we're gonna start getting all this stuff cut up around the backside and thrown into the center. Make sure we got a good perimeter all the way around it. Threw the chain, came back and slapped my pants. So good thing I put the pants on, happy about that. A lot of people ask about me burning in the woods. Uh, I take a lot of precautions normally when I burn in the woods. Rained a couple days ago, everything's pretty moist. The leaves are a little dry. <clears throat> and it's supposed to rain pretty good tonight. So that's why we're burning today. Also a tremendous amount of dirt cleared on the uphill side, which is normally where she wants to go. However, I did make a really crucial mistake on this. And we're kind of playing catch up right now, which is where a fellow wants to be with a brush fire, you know, just slightly behind it. I forgot to clear that perimeter around the backside first. And there is a pretty good load on that side. <laughs> So it's been about an hour, I was working on another project, came down to check on this, and it's burnt down quite a bit. I think I'm gonna go around the perimeter one more time throwing stuff in. I'll keep checking on it periodically throughout the night, and then we'll see what she looks like in the morning. The radiant heat coming off this thing is just wild. I should probably go get some gloves. Here it is the following morning. Wow, not a whole heck of a lot left. I'm gonna get this stuff thrown together. Watch where we step. Crazy. Not bad. That's all thrown together and cooking, not too bad. So I got some thoughts and modifications I want to make to that, but before we do, people are always concerned about us starting forest fires, and I 100% agree. You see them on the news every year, millions of acres burned, and they always want to know why I'm comfortable burning or I burn at. Well, one, I put a lot of prep work in to make sure, oh yeah, disclaimer, not a how-to or instructions, I'm just explaining my view on it. You saw I got a little bit behind on the backside, but some prep work to make sure that where it's at is in a decent spot, but here's the other reason I'm okay burning where I'm at. You see that direction? See all the trees are relatively healthy. You don't see any broken off tops. The floor looks relatively clean. That's the side of the property we started on. You see this direction? See all the broken off tops? See all that? Can you see all the deadfall laying on the ground from the broken off ash trees that were killed by the emerald boar beetle? That's the direction we're going. All that fuel and all that mess that's sitting on the ground, we will slowly through the years work through there and get that all burnt off. My point is this, if I don't come out here and burn this stuff and it stays like that, at some point Mother Nature is going to say, no worries Mike, we'll take it from here and Mother Nature will burn it. We see it every year, we just talked about it. Lightning fires, all kinds of stuff. When Mother Nature feels like it's got too much tinder, it's going to take care of its problem. I don't want that to happen because I've got stuff on this property that I want to protect. So as long as the weather's cooperating, I got low wind, I got good moisture on the ground, and we've got a good break around it, I'm comfortable doing it because I know as we continue to make that progress in that direction, we're making the rest of the property safer. So if anything ever does kick off, so if something kicks off back here on the 60,000 acres of our neighboring landowner, hopefully we got a decent chance to stop it. 
It's one of the reasons we have the trail that runs with that property boundary. Exact same scenario. Not to mention, if there's less stuff on the ground and I do have to kick a fire break up with a dozer or a backhoe or something, well, there's less stuff on the ground, so it's easier for me to work through there. So to everybody that suggested getting a fan and putting on the fire to push through, yeah, 10 out of 10. There's no way. I've burnt a ton of piles. There's no way if I had just let that burn, we'd have been able to push that heat all the way through that pile like that. I mean, that was just a day and gone. Huge difference maker. Here's what I want to do. I want to take some tin that I got laying around, and I think I'm going to make a funnel to kind of force the air and take some tin with some height for a little bit of a heat shield and maybe conduit these wires just to give them a little, yeah, right there, give them a little bit of protection. But that is gonna be a valuable tool for the future when it comes to burning these things because I've got a bunch of stumps to get rid of. Let's walk aboard here and get up on the bow and take a look at the progress. Excuse me. So where the big stump is, we'll have a nice big flat, probably fire pit area, some outdoor games, that kind of thing. And then just a good clean view down here. Something to look out upon. Sometimes these maples are pretty sensitive to work around the root systems. So we'll have to see how they pull out. That one we didn't really get into the crown much. That one and that one we did. That one's not in great shape anyway. So we'll have to see how they last. If they start dying off, we'll cut them down. Uh, but either way, that and that are red buds. That's a red bud, and the red buds populate here pretty quickly. So maybe encouragement with some red buds and dogwoods down in here. This tree right here is a dogwood. Those are natural forests as well. If the maples die off, we'll replace them with some native budding species that look cool and will look beautiful in the springtime. That's it for this one. Sheeting's coming in tomorrow, still no word on the lift. So I believe the next video Next video is probably gonna be back on the dump truck for a little bit of work. Why not, huh? Truly can't thank you guys enough for watching. I hope you tune in for the next one. I'm just gonna give you like 10 or 15 seconds listening to the birds this morning, because it's beautiful. <laughs>